Hi, welcome to another edition of Snow Tracks Television, a show where riding is just part of the job. Coming up on this week's show, Tara's dancing with her group of ladies helping ladies on the 10th anniversary of the Kelly Shires Snow Run. In Test Ride, I hop on Articat's new Crossfire R1000. And in Trail Tech, Luke answers a few of your questions about trailers. Plus on this week's show, we've got an inside look at Articat's 2010 lineup, so stick around. Better rides, better riders. Snowmobiling in Ontario, there's no place like this. And by Yamaha. What kind of Yamaha are you? Each winter early in the season, we get invitations from the manufacturers inviting us to their sneak peek unveilings. And every year, the hamster starts turning upstairs wondering what we're going to see. Now, sometimes we can figure it out, but other times we have no idea. But it's always fun to find out for sure. We were kind of looking at the industry and how many models that we have now, and everybody has a lot of models, and we wanted to try to simplify that, so we came up with four cornerstones of a great riding experience. You know, when the push comes to shove, what does a, what does a customer really want? And the first one is world's fastest snowmobiles. It was something we thought that we owned and we wanted that to be a cornerstone of a great riding experience. When you think about Articat, you think about world's fastest sleds. We've got this legendary history of speed and performance uh, uh, that, that, you know, kind of like a Corvette is out there. And so uh, when we come out with machines like a Z1 Turbo or the CFR, it really settles that appetite for that straight line, go fast, top end performance. The second uh, cornerstone is a body saving ride. We hired Wayne State University and said, okay, what, what, how can we test body forces uh, on a snowmobile with ours versus the competitors? And they came up with a test and, and we did that last week. It came out very favorable to us as we knew it would. Uh, you know, in some cases it's 30% uh, less jar on you than with competitive models. The next cornerstone for Articat is the expert grade mountain machines. And what that means is we built the M chassis specifically for the mountains. Uh, year over year, we've been pulling more and more weight out. The ergos are perfect. You have adjustable steering up and down. Our M series mountain machines really bring out the best. Uh, they make you a better rider. It kind of takes you from an intermediate to kind of an advanced type rider because uh, it is an unbelievable sled when it comes to carving through the powder, the handling characteristics that it has. The fourth cornerstone and probably the one that we're best known for is industry-leading horsepower. We have 177 horsepower in our Z1 Turbo. Nobody can touch. We have uh, a thousand cc two-stroke engine that nobody else is making. When you think about Articat, you think about horsepower. For 2010, Articat continues to build on their industry-leading horsepower foundation with a new 800 HO engine. New for 2010 is our 800 HO two-stroke, two-cylinder, EFI, at 155 horsepower quite easily. And it should be class leading when it comes to the 800cc class. 2010 also sees a host of refinements to the Articat snowmobile lineup, beginning with the skis and ending at the snow flap. We've got a new design shape to the plastic ski that we use on our models. It's a little bit wider for a little more flotation but we've gone to a deeper, steeper keel, but yet we still want to keep that light handlebar feel so you don't wear your arms out. There used to be quite a large conglomerate of, uh, of plastic and a trunk and a fender. We've eliminated all that and gone to a more streamlined looking. We've incorporated a pouch in the back of the seat and then the very back of the tunnel, a new heat exchanger, a new LED tail light. Uh, we've lost some weight off the back and it really cleans it up, gives it kind of that bare look to it. But there's one last cat to introduce for 2010, a Snow Pro 500 based directly off their dominant race chassis. Although we are gearing it for a lot of the, 
the sport and junior, uh, the introductory type race classes, you're going to see a lot of, uh, you know, 30-ish year old riders that are going to want to, you know, be that wannabe racer and have what the racers have, but with a little more ease to it. I mean, it's EFI, it's got oil injection, unlike the race sled that's carbureted and you've got to mix your own gas and oil. So it's going to be a much more trail-friendly machine, but yet it still gives them that fun, aggressive, you know, racer-type uh, chassis and suspension. After the break, the gals hit the trails for a good cause. Closed captioning is brought to you by Hogo Lift, the one above. Ten years for a successful event is a task all in itself. Raising over a million dollars is mind-blowing. And all of this, the monies, the snow run, all from two ladies who wanted to make a difference for women fighting their battle with breast cancer. So, in honor of winning the founding women, we're going to do it Kelly style, and we're going to dance like no one's watching. <laughs> you out there that had the privilege of knowing Kelly Shires. In my first few moments of meeting her, I realized she's a spirited, fun, and driven individual with a love for boating and, of course, snowmobiling. In just nine years, the participants have raised over $1.2 million to financially assist the patients in their battles with breast cancer. Well, it, it's quite amazing how the snow run came about. Um, Kelly Shires was diagnosed with breast cancer in 1997, and uh, Kelly and I were really good friends. And when she was diagnosed, she realized that um, other aspects of cancer diagnosis was covered, whether it was um, for psychological or treatment, but there was a real financial barrier for women with breast cancer. And at that time, she said she was going to take her lemons and make lemonade and we came up with the idea of the snow run. Unfortunately, Kelly uh, lost her battle with breast cancer October 31st, 2004. Uh, but prior to that, we were able to start this fabulous event and raise uh, this money for women with breast cancer to financially support them with their fight um, doing snowmobiling. Give us a smile, baby. There's a lot of cases where people who have cancer can't continue to work. They, they, they don't get you know, full benefits when they're off from work they run into financial trouble. They, they can't pay their rent. They can't afford, afford groceries. They have difficulty paying for simple things like wigs and, and prosthetics. And the money raised through this event goes specifically to help with that. This is not looking for a cure for cancer. There, there's lots of great organizations that do that. And, and there's a lot of money spent on that. And that's fantastic. Th this is different. This is raised specifically to help people in their day-to-day -day struggles. So they can focus on getting better. They can focus on their treatment. They can focus on living a good life while they're being treated and while they're recovering. Awesome. Awesome trails, awesome day, awesome cause. <laughs> Everyone is welcome, no matter what your skill level is. Kelly and Susie's vision saw all skill levels participating. And believe me, there is a group for everyone. All you need is a sled, a trail pass, to be over the age of 18, hand in your pledges and, well, something to fill one of these. I'm clearly in the wrong group. Is there an extra small somewhere? <laughs> Wait, I fit! I can run with the owners! Yay! The theme behind the snow run is women helping women. The ride is designed to raise these needed funds in financially assisting women with their fight against breast cancer. Participants are encouraged to raise pledges for the charity. Everything from pledges to raffles, live silent auctions are done to help raise funds for those women who need it. Is there anything better than being out in the trail with a bunch of ladies who like to ride? I don't think so. Whether you've been on a snowmobile once or never or a hundred times, there's a team in this event for you. I mean, we have Team Turtle for beginners, which I know it's, it's a little bit of a funny name, but um, you know, whether you, you like 
you, you could be in Team Turtle. I've been riding for 20 years. You just like to take in the scenery. And then we have another team, one step up from that, we call Team Rock, and that was a team that Kelly used to lead. And then one step up from that is the Dream Team, and that's a team that I normally lead. And then there's the Hooter Haulers, which um, you can imagine by the name, uh, if you blink, you might just miss them on the trail. So, but I mean, all, all around there's something from whether you've never been on a, a snowmobile to whether you're an experienced rider. And not only whether you're experienced or not, how you enjoy to ride. So there's something for everyone. Lunch is always a good time. Not only do we get some good eats, we get to sit back, relax, and talk to each other. And this time we've got a first time participant, a celebrity, and our MC for Saturday night festivities. From the very beginning this morning when everybody put their hand up who either knew somebody or was affected by breast cancer themselves, and then there was a moment of silence and it was absolutely fantastic. I mean, you couldn't hear a pin drop with so many people that were here and so many snow machines starting up and then shutting down again. There was not a word not a pin drop and it was it was actually a very emotional moment for me having been a coming up seven year breast cancer survivor and never having met Kelly Shar. I mean she's an inspiration this woman I never met is an inspiration and the fact that she has created this not only is her legacy but as a legacy to so many people who have passed on to breast cancer what better way to get out with a bunch of women and have a ball on a skidoo it was just phenomenal you know, riding with the Hooters today, we've definitely found a couple of perks. We're home first, we're dressed, showered, changed, have a drink in us. Now we get to have some uh, girl time. <laughs> Kim always said that, that the cancer was a blessing. And when you sit down in the doctor's office and the doctor tells you or tells your wife that, that she has cancer and you understand how grave it is, at no time at that point do you ever think it's a blessing. It took me a long time to realize that, that the challenge of cancer has the opportunity to make you a better person. It made her a better person, it made her more determined, and I like to think it made me a better person. It makes me volunteer for events like this. This is my ability to help other people, to give back, to see friends that I never would have had without cancer, to participate in an event that I never would have been involved with without cancer, and I think that's made everyone involved with this a better person. It's helped all of us. I had no idea what I was missing out on for the past 10 years. A lot of ladies that come have either met friends here or are making new friends. And whether you come alone or in a group, you're going to meet an awesome group of people. You're going to have a tremendous amount of fun. Our theme this weekend is Kelly's favorite saying, dance like nobody's watching. And we hope that the ladies bring out their pink boas and you know their hats and have fun. I've heard a lot of good things about the bra, decorated bra contest. They should expect to have fun, a great time on the trails, and make some good friends and have some amazing memories. How was the day? Sensational. 101 miles, 101% perfect. Absolutely. Although Kelly lost her battle with breast cancer in October of 2004, there's still a huge dedicated base of volunteers that are living her legacy. With over 1,200 participants in the 10 years, over $1.5 million raised, and an average of 200 women helped each year. This is what it's all about. So dance like no one's watching. Coming up in Test Ride, Articat's Crossfire R1000. Test Ride is brought to you by SteadyMate, tying down your outdoor adventure toys. The Crossfire R1000 is a new concept for Articat in 2009. It takes their hybrid crossover chassis, but plants a short track inside the tunnel. Now with this move, you might be thinking Firecat, but trust me when I say this, with a 1,000cc two-stroke underneath the hood, those old Firecats never had this kind of power. Squeezing the trigger on this feel on, you'll feel the torque of the engine build up and then begin to pull at your arms holding onto the bars. The sensation is different from Firecats in years past where their engines were very quick to rev. This cat, despite gobs of kinetic energy waiting inside the cylinders, delivers its power in a much more controllable manner. The cool thing is, the power doesn't ever seem to stop, even well into the triple digits. 
snowmobiling is not all about terminal velocities though, because let's face it, a machine like this has still got to be ridden on the trails. The neat thing about the Thousand is, it can still be a kitten when you want it to be. At idle, the 1000 is a little scary to look at because of the vibration out of the big twin. I swear, you can make a martini for Bond, shaken, not stirred. But just off idle, the engine smooths out and purrs. Plus, on the trail at normal speeds, it's got so much torque, you can literally spend all day at less than a quarter throttle, and the mill is happy to do it. The EFI keeps control of the air-fuel mixture so it doesn't feel like it's loading up, and the clutches shift up nicely to keep the RPM low in the power band. Plus, with the IRP system on the bars, you can get your body in a comfortable position to really put on the miles. This combination is also a great mileage maker. Riding on the trails with other machines, the 1000 is very comparable, even comparable to those four-stroke machines that hang their hat on their fuel economy. Now, this is something I wouldn't have expected out of the 1000, but the tally at the fuel pumps doesn't lie. Articat didn't abandon the hybrid concept in favor of the R model. There's still all the 141s in the lineup that live in the crossover segment, but the R is the best one at delivering on the promise of handling Cat built its reputation on. In fact, riding this scooter, I couldn't help but think back to the days of the ZR, days that many people feel were at the top of the scale in terms of snowmobile handling. A lot of this has to do with the riding position, which actually feels very close to the old ZRs when you got right up on the bars and basically sat on top of the fuel tank. Luckily, with the Crossfire, the seat extends far enough forward, you no longer have to sit on the hard plastic tank to get into that rider forward position. Suspension-wise, we chose to go without the high-end Snow Pro version in favor of the regular one that puts a more traditional Fox Zero Pro coilover spring setup in the suspensions. Personally, I like the plushness of the steel springs over the floats on the Snow Pros. We do wish that Cat would have installed their slide action rear suspension on the R's. Even with the coilovers, we know the ride could be better and that Cat is leaving their best rear skid on the table back in Thief River Falls. The fast track skid is the one that lives in the R version. It does have the torque sensing link on the rear arm, which the rest of the Crossfire line goes without, but it's still not enough to match the ride of the slide action. At 128 inches of track length for both suspensions, I would hope that the newer slide action rear skid will soon be found in the Crossfire version. Well, time will tell. Overall, the R is probably my personal favorite out of the entire Cat line. It has the aggressive, edgy looks of the old Firecats and truly captures the soul of the Articat brand. This Crossfire can breathe fire when you want it, but also mellow out for a truly great trail experience. Like every other sled on the snow, there's still room for improvement, or in this case, perhaps refinement is a better word to use. But regardless, the Crossfire R1000 is still one of my favorite sleds to ever come out of CAD. Up next, we've got the answers to all your trailering questions. Check is brought to you by the RideFX Air 2.0, ultimate performance with no springs attached. As sledders, a trailer is one of those accessories you just need to participate. Even if you live right on the trail, you'll still need a trailer to get your ride back and forth from the dealer or transport it to your favorite riding destination. Now, knowing why you need a trailer is important, but knowing what to look for when buying a trailer is what's really on the mind of our loyal viewer, Dave. So let's see if we can get the answers he's looking for. His first is the difference between leaf springs and torsion axles. The differences between a leaf spring and a Torflex axle is a leaf spring is a heated steel bent, which gives you a spring rate, and a Torflex axle is a rubber-filled tube, which gives you a shock-absorbing compression rate suspension. The benefit of a Torflex axle over a leaf spring is that the leaf spring, if it contacts a bump and it's driven up with 200 pounds of force, it will come back down with 200 pounds of force, contacting the road and giving you that tug and jerk sensation that you feel with most trailers. A Torflex axle, because it's compressing and rolling the rubber to work, that 
eliminates that slap to the road of the tire and it also takes the vibration out of the trailer because the rubber is your shock absorber. Next, Dave is wondering what's better, a steel galvanized deck or plywood. The benefits or differences between a galvanized to a plywood deck is that the plywood has kind of become the industry standard now. It's easier to work with, it's easier to put into the trailer, it's more economical. And the galvanized decks, as a rule of thumb, were very slippery to walk on and the carbides would dig in, so it's become not the preferred choice. Dave is also curious about the types of braking systems used on trailers and the difference between them. There's two types of braking systems commonly used. Electric brake drum system or surge hydraulic disc brake system. Electric brakes operate by a controller within your tow vehicle, sending a electrical voltage to the brakes. The more voltage, the more brakes will come on, stopping the trailer faster. With surge brakes, there's an actuator on the coupler, which is on the tongue of the trailer. As you stop, the momentum of the trailer pushing on this coupler will send brake fluid to the back discs. The harder it pushes on your truck, the more brake fluid goes to the back, the more it will break. Tires are also a concern, and Dave is wondering what's better, the short fat ones or tall and skinny. Basically, it's best to keep the center of gravity as low as possible on your trailer, and that can mean using the short wheel and tire combo. But because of the width, it's best if they track in the same rut left by the tow vehicle. If the tracks are different, then the skinny tire should be used to reduce rolling resistance and the chance of skidding. Finally, Paul has a few words of advice. One of the biggest misconceptions that people buy a trailer on is price. They come in, they look for the lowest price trailer, even a used trailer, to get them going. I think people need to look at value more. Sometimes it's better to pay a little more and get something that has value down the road and no maintenance. Snowmobilers have always been generous when it comes to their fundraising activities. And according to ISMA, raise about $3 million annually for charities across Canada and the U.S. Now these causes range from things like breast cancer to ALS research like we've seen in this show, but also things like Special Olympics and Easter Seals. Now not only are these causes great things to support, but also great ways to spend time with friends and family. Until next week, ride safe, ride sober, and we'll see you on Snow Tracks. Snow Tracks Television has been brought to you by... Arctic Cat, share our passion. The Spot Personal Satellite Messenger, live to tell about it. And by Triton Trailers, hitch up to quality. Can't get enough of Snowtracks Television? Log on to SnowtracksTV.com to watch all your favorite episodes again.